dear students now we will discuss about the design of seating equipment part 3 here if i recall we discussed uh, in the previous uh, design we talked of the metering mechanism as uh, if i re recall i had told that in a seating equipment what we have we have the hopper we have the seed metering unit then the seed tubes then the furrow openers and then the tube through which the um, uh, seeds will fall. Now here in this section of the design, we will be talking of the uh, furrow opener, the, um, the material of the furrow opener, the design of the furrow opener, the type of the shoe which is there and uh, the um, uh, forces which are coming on onto these shoes and uh, how to analyze these and how to design this so that we can fit this as well as if we know that the total size of the um, equipment will be uh, a particular uh, dimension, then we will also try to find out the um, frame on which this, these sanks or these, um, uh, these furrow openers will be uh, fitted. So, what we will talk in this section is two, uh, there are two things to be talked of. One, we are talking of the tines or the shanks and the sooves which are connected each uh, which are there and then these are connected to the main frame. Now there will be the de depending upon the total number of such shanks or the um, furrow openers the size of the frame will also be designed. So we will start with first the uh, shank or the sooves or the furrow openers. Well, design of the time, we, we are uh, many books and many locations you will find we are talking of this as tines. But then as uh, if we are talking of tines, I had shown you earlier in a cultivated tine, a, uh, a double type of um, a shovel type of tine. Here we are talking of the one which will open the furrow and that is why the different, uh, the, uh, the design is slightly different. You, if you observe the design here. You can see here that this is the um, total frame over here and this is the uh, portion which is of the uh, shoe. Uh, this one is your uh, seed tube through which the tube comes and then the seed will fall here and the furrow is made. Now there are various dimensions of this particular um, uh, uh, tine. If I call let me uh, please permit me to call this as a tine for the time being just for the um, understanding part of it. So this has a length A here, a height A here, a height H here, a delta H here uh, from the last point to the end of this. And the, the, there is a location here where we will see that the total draft which falls, which is acting on this. Now what will happen when the, when the um, tine is moving into the soil, it will encounter the strength of the soil uh, and try to open the furrow. And once the furrows are open, the seed tube uh, is carrying the seed and seed will fall. Now the amount of uh, load which comes on this will, will determine what should be the size of this, what should be the dimensions of this. This is what we need to do. We will consider uh, one at a time. Now let us see here, mm, forces on furrow openers. Now what are the different types of forces which come on to these uh, furrow openers or the times which we are talking of? The, on the shovel, the bending force, there will be a bending force coming into picture. Yes, it will try to bend because of the soil force, it will try to get, uh, it will try to bend. Full sweep, then also there will be a bending. Half sweep, now these are the different types of furrow openers. Furrow openers uh, could be of uh, a shovel type, a full sweep type, half sweep type and sew type. Now what, we will, what are the forces which come on to these? Actually, we find that the uh, shovel type will have bending force, full sweep also will have bending force, half sweep also bending and twisting also because it is half. Then shoe type will have bending force. Now this will be there. Now question is what type um, of the uh, one which you choose for your design. But, uh, but each one of them are facing this uh, uh, type of force. Now what is the draft? Draft on one tine. If we consider this tine uh, into picture here, 
what is the amount of draft, what is the you can say when we are talking of draft here we are all talking of the horizontal force which is actually acting on to the shoes at this location. So, this is nothing but the cross section area of the furrow and the soil resistance force. So, this is the force which is acting because this furrow opener is moving ahead and then creating a furrow. So, it will take care of all the soil forces which are encountering in the process and total volume is because of the area of the furrow. So, area of the furrow and soil resistance force with this soil resistance force is in the kg here. So, you can say the soil resistance force kg or Newton whatever you can say and cross section area is this. So, then what is the draft that you get? The draft is see cross section area is this much and soil resistance is this force. So, the theoretical draft for on one time using a factor of safety, we need to add a factor of safety always because then see we design that uh, the, dam the amount of force uh, it should encounter is something like this, but then we have to have a certain value of factor of safety to see that uh, the it does not fail in the process because there could be situations where it may encounter a heavy load and, and in order to take care of that we should have a fake, fake, um, fairly good amount of factor of safety connected together. So, this d then is d into factor of safety b 0 is the width of furrow opener. Now, what is the width of furrow opener? Well, this is not shown here in maybe in, in the earlier uh, in the next one we will be able to show and a is the uh, a is here is the maximum depth of operation. This is what it comes this is the one which is the depth of operation. So, in this uh, depth of operation maximum a maximum is the depth of operation which we are calling a value a. Now, width of the furrow opener b 0 is the width. So, if we want to find out the width of the total furrow then 2 a max into b 0 because it is nothing but the area under that uh, um, under that uh, when the when the shoe is moving. So, when the um, this particular shoe or the sweep is moving inside what is the total area. So, it will be nothing but half base into altitude it is just uh, uh, like a triangular shape as it has been said here. So, the width of furrow is this. So, we get the draft on 1 um, which is in kg is given by this here. right the moment on time. Now, what is the moment which is coming on that? It will try to when you say bending moment because it will try to bend we have said the bending stress will go it will try to bend. Now, what is the bend dropped on one time dropped on one time into moment arm length definitely this this will give us the total value we are which we have taken here h dash which is h plus this a. So, this is h dash here and d is the draft which we had got earlier. So, the total bending b m is given by this. Now, what is the bending stress? So, bending stress from general um, machine design formula you will be in a position to get this particular formula which I need not explain much into details because all these you have undergone uh, in different course elsewhere. Where I is the polar moment of inertia uh, of the section which is considered and y is the distance of the neutral axis for the point at which the stress is calculated well. So, the torsional moment now what is the uh, torsional moment uh, uh, on to the time it will try to twist this. Yes. So, what is the torsion which comes drop down one time into width of the sweep. So, because it is at the um, it will uh, act at the central line of that and that is why we to the sweep by 2. So, this comes to be this value where d is the draft on one time and b 0 is the width. So, b 0 by 2 here and so the torsional moment then T m is given by T m by z or j is the polar uh, polar area section modulus. So, what we get in this design is important with respect to finding out how much is the what should be the strength, what should be the material of construction of this. That is why we have considered each aspect of the bending and the uh, twisting moments which come. 
Now, once we know about the bending moment, the uh, twisting moment, how do we go to an equivalent stress which is coming out there or equivalent moment or the equivalent total stress which will come on to the, uh, the particular shank, this, this particular item uh, when we consider both these aspects. Okay. Well, so then the equivalent. So, what we get equivalent over here is we get the equivalent here this and this one is for bending the other is for twisting moment. So, bending and twisting moment. now if you go back to the machine design you will find here when we used to design the shafts there are certain considerations which need to be looked into. For example, see the combined uh, shock and fatigue factor also comes into picture because sometimes the, uh, if the shaft is stationary, there is one case when the shaft rotates, there is another case you might have uh, learned this in your machine design. Now, taking a clue from there, then this equivalent uh, uh, stress is given by K B times bending and K T times the twisting moment here. What are these K B and K T? K B is the combined shock and fatigue factor applied to bending moment then K T is the combined shock and fatigue vapor applied to torsional moment. Now, these values generally when gradually applied load, when the load is applied gradually K B is 1 and this K T is also 1 and that is why you may find in many of the books that this is uh, simply in fact, instead of this it will be some simply like this that tau uh, B square uh, plus tau M square. that is all, but we have kept this because we want you to have a clear idea about what exactly is the load coming on to that. We can consider a cantilever beam and uh, situation is that it is the shank is uh, fitted to the frame and this side is the force which is connected, uh, which is acting on to that over the soil forces and that is why we wanted you that you must have a clear idea about the total stress which comes on to the member. And these K B and K T in fact, in uh, sometimes when we are talking with respect to sudden loads and it is possible in some of the soils, it is possible that we may get uh, sudden loads are uh, there. In that case K T can be taken as 1.5 to 2. We can take for safety purpose, let us stay for safety purpose, we can say that K T can be taken as 2 here and uh, you can use this. Now, there are other things say for example, we are interested to find the thickness and the width b, because the we would like to find out what is the thickness t and thickness width of the tine. These are important. Generally, these are assumed to be in the ratio of 1 is to 4. Now, uh, one would like to know why they are such. If you go back to the design uh, machine design, you will find that the members who which are under uh, such uh, um, um, such loading of bending and moment uh, bend, bending and twisting moments as well as uh, the uh, ratio of length uh, total length to the diameter there uh, slender, uh, slenderness ratio. So, considering these you will find that these T and B are generally in the ratio of 1 is to 4. Well, certain other formulae I have written here for your uh, information. It is about the polar moment of inertia of the section which is given as this where T and B and polar um, section area section modulus which is J which is given as this. Now, we are talking of this T and B over here when we are thinking that what should be the diameter uh, sorry what should be the thickness and what should be the width of the uh, members which we are considering for the design. So, we have seen that we started with this shank with the, mm, uh, the portion of the shank, the portion of the shoe, then what are the forces which are acting when the mm, soil is uh, when the uh, sweep is moving inside this. And then we are talking with respect to what are the different types of twisting and bending moments come and how we take an equivalent stress with respect to these two and try to find out the values of these, which will help us in actually finding out what should be the thickness of the material, what should be the total length uh, H and uh, A what we have shown earlier to you and the thickness B.
Now, the toolbar, this is uh, see we just talked of the uh, tines there, we have um, uh, taken care of that what are the forces coming into that and uh, what should be the values of uh, the thickness and uh, width. Now, where this will be fitted as I said that these will be fitted onto the um, frame. So, what should be the size of the frame, what should be the design of the frame, this is very important. So, uh, the frame is shown over here, this is, this is the frame here which is um, shown to you. Now, the this is designed for um, number of times, higher number of times. Generally, we, you might have seen uh, by now that the times which we are talking with respect to either cultivator or we are talking of seed reels or um, these we talk with respect to say a 7 ton cultivator, 5 ton cultivator, 9 ton cultivator like this and accordingly when we are talking of seed drills accordingly we are talking uh, same thing with respect to these as well. And therefore, if there are the, um, uh, the number is say um, 7 and 4 are in the um, rear and 3 are in, uh, in front then we will design for 4 because we will see that that is the maximum value. So, similarly that is what is written here that the frame should be designed for higher number of times which we are thinking that that will be fitted on to that because this also talks of the total because you can see from here to here it also talked of the total width of that which will be actually uh, trailed behind the uh, tractor I mean uh, trailed behind the tractor particularly when it is op in operation otherwise uh, definitely these are mounted uh, equipment. So, they will be in lifted form uh, with the three point linkage uh, design. Now, frame is subject to both bending and torsion yes definitely. Generally, the section of these frames are hollow or square in, or rectangular uh, cross section well uh, we have seen and needless, uh, needless to explain over here that uh, with respect to the designs we find that sol hollow a square or rectangular cross sections are still giving us a fairly strong frame and that is why we pick up any one of this. Now, we how the bending forces come well it has already been seen bending forces is coming because of the weight of the equipment and then the torsional forces are coming because of the soil forces total soil forces which are coming into all the tines which are there or the sews which are there while the whole implement is going say it is a say we are talking of a 7 tine or 9 tines. So, you will find that all the 9 tines are moving in the soil and at a certain depth operation we are maintaining a certain depth operation where we want the seed to be uh, uh, sown and therefore, the torsional forces are coming from there. What is the procedure here? Well, as I said earlier that if you have um, the number of uh, tines and um, in, in the um, power in the um, uh, cultivator or in seed drills and all. So, generally we like to put them in two rows uh, on the tool bar because they then you will be in a position to cover this with the, it has certain advantages. Um, generally um, uh, the number of tines in the front row is one less than the number of times in the rear one. Yes, you might have seen this. Now, advantage here what does it do? It has certain um, purpose behind this reduces the total draft requirement. Yes, it reduces the total draft requirement instead of having um, longer one then facilitates easy maneuverability. It facilitates easy maneuverability ahead at headlands and during turning true and also reduces the total size of the frame because then if you have all 9 or uh, 13 or 7 uh, in one row then you find the total width has uh, increased. So, it the from aesthetic point of view also you can think of from the maneuverability point of view and most very important uh, importantly is the uh, headland management because you lose lot of time and hence you your field efficiency will come down. So, therefore, it is very important how, what where they should be um, kept. So, it is said that these are generally on the tool bar they should be kept um, uh, say one less than the uh, rear one say if you are talking of 7 times then 3 will be in the front and 4 will be behind uh, like this. So, we So, 
So now on the frame then you see here total draft on the frame. What is the total draft or total force which is acting on the frame here? We can see that uh, we can see here that uh, all the times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 these are uh, all given here. Now, we are talking of a center line. Now, you can see that this is the one which we are looking of the center line. So, the total draft is soil resistance into cross section area of the furrow into the number of times. Yes, this is what is the total draft. Now, draft on one time, what is the draft on one time? Total draft divided by number of times. Yes, very simple as that, that uh, if you know the total, you can find out. Then, the draft on one time is we have already found out with this for a certain factor of safety we found out earlier d e. Now, what is the bending moment uh, acting about the central axis of the frame? Yes, bending moment acts about the central axis of the frame. So, what is this? If you take moment about uh, this point uh, here, what you are getting? Then the bending moment m b is given r a, where r a is this here. So, with respect to this, you will find that 5 t 0, you, you can find 2 plus 2 4 plus 1 5. So, 5 t 0 here and accordingly d e and uh, t 0, uh, d e t 0, these, these will be acting in the other direction because this is acting in this direction, these are acting in the other direction. So, total bending moment acts about the central axis of the frame and is given as m b is equal to this minus this. This is very simple, if you simple work out you can get the values. So, you are in a position to get the bending moment about the central axis given here of the frame. So, now we have understood that what will be the frame. Next point comes into picture as the what will be the material of the frame. We have talked of the cross section of the frame and we said that hollow or um, generally hollow either a square cross section or rectangular cross section etcetera. And now we are talking of the total um, the draft which comes on to this or the force and the moment which is coming on to this bending moment. Now, let us go ahead and see what are the other forces which come into play. Yes. So, like uh, the same it is the when it bending uh, comes on to the shoes and uh, twisting comes on to the shoes, these are connected to the frame. So, those will be definitely transmitted to the uh, frame as well and therefore, we can say that the equivalent moment, equivalent moment acting on the frame is simply this. We have we have put this m b square and m t square. We are talking of bending and torsional. Allowable stress is given by this here. It, these are all taken. In fact, you must know that these are all taken from the standard uh, machine design books here. So for any uh, this thing, you can refer over there. So, the uh, allowable stress of the material, we generally use uh, mild steel is 1050 kg per centimeter square here and Q is polar moment of inertia of the section. Therefore, the allowable stress S T is given by T E Q by Q I. So, with respect to the frame over here and now what is the uh, detailed dimensions of the frame? Now, the po when we are talking of the section, we are talking as I said earlier that we can have either a um, hollow section whether it is a uh, square section or rectangular section. If you have a square section that what you get q i the polar moment of inertia you get like this where a, a is the uh, side and t is the thickness of the material. Similarly, if you get re um, uh, rectangular, so a and b are the two sides that uh, of the rectangle and t is the thickness. So, a minus t, b minus t and accordingly you can get the total area of the polar moment of um, inertia of this particular uh, section which you require and then you can get the allowable stress here. So, you are in a position to get the total um, design of the frame, total design of the frame. Well, therefore, on the basis of the equivalent stress, well, allowable, allowable stress of material and polar moment of inertia of the frame section, various dimensions of the frame can be computed. Yes, as we discussed there, it is possible to find 
that uh, what should be the dimension of this? What are the in between? In fact, um, we the, what are these which should be also taken care of? If it is a rigid one, of it or it is a spring tine one, that those things also come into picture. But we are not talking of that at at this point of time. Let us assume that once you select a frame or you get a frame, you will be in a position to get these things. What is the material of construction? Well, what are the different materials of construction? We discussed uh, all designs right from the beginning and we find that the tines mild steel or carbon steel because they need to remain strong there. Their fur openers high carbon steel they can because they are um, scouring will take place and they will be all with the soil. So, so um, the, um, the idea is that they should be last, um, lasting for a longer duration of time. Uh, otherwise, then you will have to change um, uh, quite often and this will um, uh, warrant cost uh, on the part of the uh, farmer and the frame is mild steel frame. So, so these are the general material of construction for uh, such a frame. So, we have what we have discussed is we have discussed about the, uh, the um, tines, we have discussed about the shoes, we have discussed about their designs, we have discussed the forces acting on that for openers. Then we have talked of the different frame on which it has to be there and the arrangement of this whether it will be front or rear, why front um, uh, less than the uh, rear ones and then what should be the width etcetera and then ultimately how do we find out the um, uh, dimensions of the frame. So, this is what we discussed uh, in this section of the design of the equipment. Thank you.